that the benefits of no dam outweigh the benefits as a, as a historical structure and cultural resources and consider retrofitting for those reasons. Uh -huh. History and education are good things. Keeping track ahead here, so that's, I saw your hand. I need one from this side first. Okay, I'll take this gentleman down here and then I'll see. My name is Don Poth, and I was born and raised at a point. I've lived all my life. I've been back behind there lots of times. I don't know how many of you people have been back there. Obviously, this gentleman hasn't been back there recently. Oh, no, no, 30 years, 40 years with my kids. Then you know what's back there? Okay. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's a, I mean, that's a discussion to have after the meeting. No, the, uh, what's back there can't be replaced. Once that dam is gone and that water drains that out of there, it's dead. Like Mr. Rosecrans said, it's been there a long time. Sure, the dam has been there, and they say they got money to take it out. Okay. Why can't they get money to repair it? Let's repair the dam. I was in the wholesale fishing tackle business for 26 years. I saw thousands of fish come up over that dam. They never had no problem. When they show the picture of the dam water going over the brown waters, there's not damp salmon going up in the middle of winter like that. They're coming up in the springtime when the water's coming up. The fish sliders are good. They, don't, they can repair those. I don't understand why they can't get money to repair it. If you're going to take it out, get money to repair it. That's what I'm for. Yeah. We'll uh, have John address the, the, what is a, the question that was addressed was why spend the money on taking it out, why not spend it in repairing it? So, John, you give us some insights on that. Well, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Um, there hasn't been anybody coming forth to give us funds to repair it. Um, we don't know what the repair costs are, but you have a group that's come forth to give us funds to uh, let it finish, please. We do have a group that's come forth to give us funds to remove it. We have this huge liability. Um, we have not sought funds to to um, uh, to repair the dam since I've been here. I know in previous um, administrations and previous uh, groups have sought funds, and it's been very very difficult to find them. Um, uh, Paul, if you don't mind me calling on you, I mean you were a director for several years. Did you ever have any luck finding funds to do a wholesale improvement of the dam? Some dollars just to the county to remove logs, the log jams, but other than that, um, or, or no money available for the kind of maintenance that needs to be done. Yeah. And the powerhouse is kind of a testament to that. It's falling apart. Yep. Okay. Okay. Thank you. This gentleman in uh, the dark shirt and the white shirt. Uh, Bundry is shady, go. Uh, if this dam is removed and the wetlands around it drain, what effect will that have up in the Shady Cove area? Will it narrow the river? Will the uh, river get shallower? Um, is the Army, has the Army Corps of Engineers, will they put more water into the river to make up for, the, for this loss? Okay. Thank you. I can answer that. The, the Repeat seven. the question, too. Okay. Okay. Sure. Yeah, the question was, what effect will it have up the river of the site? And one of the things, just to point out, is that there's a you know, hard rock ripple right there, so that's the reservoirs from that down, that point down the stream. However, there's a you know rigorous uh, sediment transport study as part of this project that's already underway that uh, will look at you know, what will the effects be of removal, what would the effects be of removal, and what would it cost, uh, what, you know, where would the sediment go, how would it go out? So, really, you know, the complete answer would come later. Well, you know, I would assume that if the level of the reservoir went down by 30 feet, there might be a, a drop immediately adjacent to the dam, uh, the water level, the groundwater level. Like I said, you know, the sediment transport study and other studies that are underway will determine, you know, what the drop would be. The main area of, of influence Groundwater, surface water, <coughs> in this area right here. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, so, I, I think 
quickly if it, there are things that are part of the study and we saw the studies that would be part of the project if it goes ahead. Um, let's see. I had um, our last one. This gentleman was first. Okay, we'll go to Steve here and then you're next over here. My name is Steve Kiesling. I live on Upper River Road in Gold Hill. And the significance of that is I live at the site of the um, Gold Hill Diversion Dam that was taken out last year. And uh, I bought the property 10 years ago when the uh, dam discussion started. And I was, um, I was not exactly in favor of it because I, I'm a rower and I row above the dam. And uh, anyway, the dam is gone and I can't row. Um, but the what I did realize is that um, the river's a lot happier now that the dam is gone. And I think that's something to, see, to consider in this. Um, we have a salmon ceremony at my place. It dates back a couple of thousand years. And um, the Tacoma were there, and they, they had the ceremony where the salmon came. And um, Agnes Baker Pilgrim is the elder of that tribe. She's 84 years old. And I talked to her about the removal of of the dam at my place. And one of the things she said is that um, in her memory, in the memory of her tribe, uh, the population of fish was some um, multiple of what anybody has seen in our lifetimes in that river. And that it had been declining pretty steadily since the 1850s when, when we came in and actually wiped out the people here. Um, I think that is significant. And she also said, the most important thing in, these, in this is to ask what the river wants. What does the river ask for? And I think in my own consideration of asking what the river wanted at my place, I'm an Olympic rower, rowing matters to me. Um, it, was, it was pretty clear to me that the river wanted something different than me were rowing there. And going, being on the group that um, worked on the, um, the Greenway, you know, up, up River Road, looking at that process and bringing together people who were really angry um, nine months ago and now, actually we're now we're all neighbors talking to each other and we've got a project that I think will help everybody. We didn't close the road. Um, anyway, it being in that process, I mean, we have this enormous opportunity with this new Greenway to increase access for everyone. We also have this enormous liability. I don't want this dam breaking in my 40, in the next 40 years that I plan to be here, because it would wipe me out. Um, I think it's also clear in, in looking at just, you know, what does the river want? The river wants to be back the way it was. John's file reminded me that Mrs. White had asked a question about the benefits outweighing the liabilities, I think, if I'm phrasing it right. So he's going to take it a stab at answering that. Well, I think it was a very good question. And basically, do the benefits of taking the dam out outweigh the benefits of keeping the dam? And I think it's a very good question. And I think the, the answer to that is that depends on who you ask. And that's one of the reasons that we're here today. I mean, we hear from people who think it's a good idea to take the dam out and feel that the benefits do outweigh it. There's other people that feel like it don't. Ultimately, the Board of Commissioners will have the final say whether we take that, the dam out. And one of the reasons of why you're here is we're reflecting these written comments, we're reflecting these, these um, uh, verbal comments. That's going to be applied to the board, and they're going to use that to help that they're going to weigh on the description of all. It's a great question, but it really depends on your perspective, and the Board of Commissioners will have the ultimate decision on that. Thank you, John. Okay, next is the rating of lavender pot. Hello, my name is Angie Michock. I uh, live in 8300 Gold Ray Road. I purchased the property on uh, the 23rd of April this year. 